Are you looking for wisdom, courage, and guidance on your journey as a change maker? Grab your headphones, a warm drink, and possibly a notebook. You're going to want to take notes. You've found your new favorite podcast. Welcome to Become a Good Ancestor, a podcast hosted by Layla Saad. Layla is a New York Times and Sunday Times bestselling author, an international speaker, and a globally respected teacher on the topics of race, identity, leadership, personal transformation, and social change. In each episode, Layla interviews some of the world's most inspiring authors of color who are changing the world with their words. From memoirs to manifestos, poetry to pop culture, science to social justice, and everything in between. Join Layla as she dives deep with BIPOC authors who are showing us the way to healing and liberation. This is a place for people who want to help change the world, in honor of those who have come before us, and in service to those who will come after we are gone. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Become a Good Ancestor podcast. And today I'm here with a very special bonus episode. Today I'm not speaking to an author who's being featured in our book club, but I'm speaking to a very important person who is a part of Team Good Ancestor, who has been instrumental in helping me put together something that I'm so excited to offer into the world. Today, I'm speaking with Nina Everflow, who is an educational consultant who's been working for over 20 years to help learners build, design uh, courses, and learning experiences that create real transformation. Um, before I go into my spiel, I just want to say, hi, Nina. I'm so happy to have you here. It is an absolute joy. Thank you so much. It is so joyful to have you here because, you know, we've been working so um, so hard behind <laughs> the scenes over the last few months um, that we've been building Become a Good Ancestor, and you've just been such a key part of this work that we're doing. And I'm excited for people to have the chance to listen in to this conversation, to hear about what we've been building, why, how, and what we're hoping that it's going to do in the world. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So I want to give people a little bit of context, a little bit of background first before we dive in with Nina. So, you know, we started the Good Ancestor podcast initially. That was back in 2019. And uh, I interviewed, had the chance to interview dozens and dozens of BIPOC activists, authors, change makers, good ancestors, people who are doing leadership work in the world that is really helping to change the world. And then at the end of 2021, I'm trying to keep trying to remember what year we're in. We're in year 2022. So at the end of 2021, I was in a place where, you know, I'd had a lot of uh, quote unquote success with my work. Me and White Supremacy had been published, had become an international bestseller. The Good Ancestor podcast was thriving. Our Good Ancestor book club was thriving. But I was feeling a sense of um, stagnancy and a sense of, I don't really know where I'm going next. You know, we've obviously been living through a global pandemic as well, which has brings up a lot of existential questions about what's important in my life and what's important for me to focus my energy on. And I'd come to a point where I felt like I was doing this work that was really important to me, but there wasn't a there wasn't something that was pulling me anymore. It was just kind of going through the motions of creating this work. And so I um, took a holiday at the end of uh, 2021. And in that time, just being able to step away from work and really th not think about work and <laughs> think about other things, that's when these insights started coming through of, you know what, I want to actually build a business. I don't just want to be an author who um, podcasts and who runs a book club, but I actually want to build a business that offers transformational experiences, learning experiences. Because what I could see was that people were listening to the podcast, going through my, white, me and white supremacy, doing the journaling, they were becoming these aspiring change makers, but they were also struggling a lot with confidence, with clarity, with a sense of um, who's my community, where am I finding connection? And I wanted to be able to create a space where people could come in 
find their own unique answers to those questions. So 2022, we get back home and uh, I basically hit the ground running. And I was saying to my husband last night, I said, I feel like through January, I was like, you know, just sprinting. Like I, and I was actually running at the time. It also started physically running every morning, but I felt like I was sprinting because I had this vision. And I said, I want to build this business that within two years, when it gets to the end of, um, uh, 2024, which will be my 40th birthday, I want to have built a seven-figure business that is helping to change the world, that is creating transformational experiences, that is uplifting BIPOC, you know, entrepreneurs and authors. I want to build a team. I want, I just, I want to do it all. And so I hit the ground running. And one of the first decisions I made was joining Rachel Rogers' program, um, We Should All Be Millionaires, um, also the title of her book. And in that space, I met some incredible BIPOC business leaders who were also building their million dollar businesses that were very purposeful, very much putting um, liberation at the forefront, very much putting the centering of black and brown dignity at the forefront, um, while also really focused on the business essentials of running a good business and running a successful and sustainable business. And so in that group, I met many people, Nina being one of them. Um, but I, I started in that space and I was very quickly very clear that this is the vision that I have. This is what I want to create. And I'm really clear that I don't want to do it alone and that I can't do it alone. And that the only way that I'm going to actually be able to do it is to hire very, very good people who are very aligned with me in terms of their values and sense of integrity, but also just like masters at what they do, just a star players at what they do. Um, and I want to build a team and an internal community that makes work a fun place, a heart centered place, and a place where we're delivering high value. So enter Nina Everflow, <laughs> who to me is like a unicorn who I can't believe exists, right? <laughs> because, you know, when we when I was thinking about the business, the major way that the business needs to make money is by offering something that people can buy. And so I wanted that to be courses. But I was really clear on my limitations. My limitations are... I am not a course designer. Mm -hmm. I do not do instructional design. That is not my background. I can write. I've certainly uh, been a corporate trainer. So I used to give trainings on like, quote unquote, soft skills, right? I know how to deliver. I've, I've been a coach. I know how to deliver the content. I have no idea how to create the content and to create it in such a way that if I were to sell it, I would feel 100% um, in integrity standing behind the price point behind it, because I know what went into it. And so as I begin to reach out and find different people who I wanted to join my team, one of them was, I need a course designer, but I need this person to be um, a, un a unicorn because I need them to be really good at what they do, but I need them to have anti-racism at the forefront of their work. I need them to have anti-oppression and liberation at the forefront of their work. I need them to be really focused on harm reduction and really focused on care. And so I had the chance to speak with a number of people in that group who were amazing, um, who, you know, were offering incredible work. And one of those people was Nina. And from the first moment I met her, I was just like, I, I just want to be your friend, first of all. <laughs> I felt so immediately comfortable with her and being around her energy. And I also felt like this is someone who knows what she's doing. So I want to bring Nina in now to come and say hello. Um, and Nina, um, I want to kick us off with... Um, you know, just a little intro to you and your work. And then also let's do our traditional, you know, who are the ancestors mm -hmm. who've influenced you on your journey question? Yeah. 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 Can I first just say like, I'm so grateful and honored to be here and like same, same first reaction, right? Like, this is like, oh, mm. can I just be Layla's friend? Can I just be in her presence <laughs> and be in conversation? And what a delight it has been like really in this 
as you were saying about like the intentionality of care and joy is like embodied in you. That's how you are. That's how you run your business. And that's certainly how Mm. this whole process of creating courses together has, has felt to me. So it's just, it's so delightful. Um, and I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you too. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. So who is my ancestor that, that inspires me? I, I always immediately go to my great grandmother. Um, uh, Grantine is what I grew up, uh, calling her, but her full name was Francina Ellison. And, um, and she was born in 1913 and um, in a time, right, in the United States where, yeah. you know, so much was unavailable for Black women. And yet um, she often said, you know, later in life that her, the highlight of her life was voting for Barack Obama. Like to be in the contrast, right, of like knowing the atrocities, experiencing them, and then seeing such dramatic change in a country in a single lifetime. I think I, I hold that in my heart space a lot. Um, but from her, I, I, I am gifted with like a strong conviction of values, a strong conviction of love is action. Love is not just a feeling, mm. but it is embodied work in the world, service to the world. Um, I get from her a love for plants a love for seeing things grow, uh, plants and people, and, um, and just a, a, full, a full heart, a full like, interest and curiosity about how we can show up better and, um, and be about relationship. Um, and when she died in her early 90s, she was such the matriarch of uh, multi-generations, right, of people. And, um, and it just, it, I, I feel her presence often. I have her pictures Mm. in my home and I just think about her and call her name and ask for her advice on a regular basis because she's still so much a part of my life. That's so beautiful. And that explains so much because I think one of the immediate things that I felt in being in conversation with you was this really grounded, strong African African matriarchal energy Mm. um, of, you know, you are safe here. Yeah. And um, what do you need? And how can we support you? And that's what I I immediately sank into that Mm. and was like, oh, like, imagine building a course with this person. This would be (laughs) um, amazing. Um, Tell us a little bit. I shared a little bit about your background. You've been doing the work that you do for over 20 years. Can you give our our listeners some context on what you do and your journey to how you do what you do? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Um, I'll start with the journey and I start with like the valuing, uh, that I feel like is so foundational to the journey, which is this inner rebelliousness that I have had my whole life. And so like, Mm. honestly, it looks like at seven, you know, asking the tough inquiring questions at vacation Bible school at, you know, 16, the first time that I traveled abroad to Costa Rica, decided that I knew how to get back to my host family from the school when I did not and was lost for four hours just walking around San Jose, Costa Rica by myself with very little Spanish skills. Uh, And they eventually found me. So thanks to all of those people. Uh, And then at 21, um, I was a college student outside of D.C., when September 11th happened and the mm-hmm. spike in Islamophobia events that transpired, you know, in that area well, across the country um, and deciding in that moment that what was what I could do, you know, what I could offer was holding space with us um, beside Muslim Americans and who are students as well to to talk about this, to talk about the atrocity, to talk about the fear, and to talk about U.S. foreign policy that perpetuates violence all around the world. Um, and so mm. those were like just some of the ways that my rebelliousness to dominant culture, to social programming, to, you know, just these ways that we are told to show up in the world has just always been around. So when I started my career in looking for spaces that could um, you know, hold that. Uh, it was really, it, it was at first a desire to see it happen on a large scale. I wanted to, I went to graduate school to become an ambassador. Uh, I started working at State Department. 
and very quickly realized that there was no intentionality about positive peacemaking from that organization. Mm. And I had to do a little soul check, right? About like, I wanted to be an ambassador to create more peace in the world, but this organization, that is not a priority for them. So how then can I use my skills and what I know to be true about how humans can connect and heal and support one another um, to show up in a, in a different way. And so that took me into the path of international education, doing uh, foreign exchange programs, and then doing leadership development through a, um, a DC-based firm that was serving the United Nations. And so I spent nine years in that uh, system, kind of, you know, as an outsider for sure, but also as a, a very um, deep observer in their systems and right. in their uh, perspectives and and very much in the ways that white supremacy operates and influences um, what humanitarian aid gets to become in the world through that organization. And so, um, you know, I was sitting in this very tiny corner, right, about writing a leadership development program, programming, and yet recognize that, you know, my contributions in, you know, um, including other diverse voices, other books to read that weren't from European or American white men, like all of these other suggestions were just like, ah, not right now. Oh, that's enough. Like, oh, let's still focus Mm. on the research and what, you know, is what Harvard Business Review was saying. Um, And so all of these, right, like just little nicks um, that were saying, uh, you know, there is one way to do this. And we want our leaders to, uh, you know, replicate what our former leaders have have done and seeing over and over again how much of a fail that was and how much it failed right. really the humanitarian aid workers around the world who were struggling with navigating you know, that space of really being of service and pouring so much of their heart and soul into their work um, and yet not feeling supported by the larger system. But yet this is what we see all around the world in almost every industry, right? Uh, so that was certainly not not unique. Um, and so I feel like it that was all a blessing. It was all a contribution, as I often say, um, that not only did I learn like to be more observant of those contrasts, but then also recognizing, oh, eventually I'm going to start my own thing so that I can be able to center my rebellion and and my joy and that both can play in the same space and we can still create these uh, environments for people to really thrive. Like, what would that look like to invite everyone to show up in their full self um, as opposed to singling out these, these separate elements that, um, that should be, that are, that are named like should or should not be there. So, um, mm. so I'm so grateful to have people like you and others who are just like recognizing and eager, right, to play in this space and to be like, hey, what could this look yeah. like if we are really about the humans being supported in the, by an environment that's going to take yeah. them or hold space for them to become the next greatest version of themselves. Yeah. Wow. I loved hearing about your history because that's the, my first time hearing about your journey and kind of the things that, you know, like you like you said, everything is a contribution. And there were things there where you were like, this is really important for me to include as part of what's important to me, but this is not. And and then whatever I create next, it has to be to remedy this or to fill this gap. Um, what would you say, I mean, when you think about, so your company is called Everflow Consulting, and this is what you do. You help create learning experiences that are grounded in instructional design, mm-hmm. but that are also, and this is what is really unique about your approach, you don't center Western ways of learning and being as the only way to learn. Correct. And you're very intentional about referencing and drawing in and really centering Mm -hmm. non-Western ways of learning. Mm -hmm. Um, Talk to me about how you, first of all, how you came to those decisions, but then also how you integrate them into your work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like it, for me, it was a very intuitive process of like coming to that realization because I would sit in a leadership training or I would sit in a, you know, uh, a training about communication skills and be told, 
it is solely about your intellect and your analytical thinking that needs to be present here. Mm. And it's not about mm -hmm. your feelings. It's not about your body. It's not about your history or what lands you are, or what you understand about who you come from. Right. Like I was just like, well, what about all of that can actually make me a better communicator or could actually make me a better leader? in an organization, which is a social system. So it, it was this like curiosity about like, why are we limiting ourselves so strongly? Like, yes, of course, intellect is necessary. And I know as a feeling person, my feelings help me tap in and connect with other people so that I can be more curious and stay more grounded and, um, and hold firm to boundaries when I need to, right? Like those are skills my feelings help me do and demonstrate. It's not solely my mind. Um, and so those were, I, I feel like just some of the ways. And, and I think also I've had some amazing mentors who just demonstrated and talked about these kinds of things often. Um, and so I'm grateful to have pulled from that kind of diversity. Like I had one, um, Bob Wright, who is an incredible facilitator who always um, quotes Persian poetry when he facilitates mm. and with just, you know, he, he must have like thousands of poets in his mind, right. About just like naming them at just these beautiful moments and what that does, right. To, as a listener, to bring you back into yourself, to bring you back into your heart space, to bring you also back into this longer lineage, right. Of human inquiry uh, that if they were talking about that in AD 900, what, and it's still being talked about now, right? Like there's some, yeah. some invitation to kind of humble ourselves in a in particular moment about the challenges that we're facing. Um, so all mm. of that kind of led into an approach that I now kind of um, think about in three ways. Number one is that it's human centered. And so we want your whole humanness to be in the space. And so when we are designing, we're thinking about how are the humans showing up and how can we support them to be fully themselves as they walk through this process alongside us? And so what do we need to know and understand about their lived experience to really uh, touch into the vastness that that is? And then the second piece is really about a liberatory orientation. Um, you know, there's so much talk, thankfully, about education right, it, right now being around the um, consumption, right? Like we have set up these educational systems in order to um, put new data into human brains uh, and then thus they will go and be better humans. But that's often not the case, um, particularly for social skills, right? I mean, maybe you can make the argument for technical skills in the industrial revolution, right? Wanting people to, to do mechanical type of things over and over again. Uh, but now in the types of challenges that we have, um, we need people to redefine what education is for. And that purpose, I believe, is more directional. It's not a destination. It is a journeying to become more of yourself, to know yourself at a deeper level, to understand the inner worlds that go on in yes. your mind and to be able to understand the, better the complexities of other human beings and that relationship, right? And navigating that relationship. That is a freeing kind of experience. It is not a I get this one coin and then I get the next coin, right? So it's a different orientation to what we are up to. And then the third piece is really about diverse community. And so I very much believe that we are um, benefited by the diversification of the voices we have in our minds. And we can't do that unless we learn from a vast array of teachers. And those teachers need to have different lived experiences. And so it's not just about different physical embodiments, but also um, mental, spiritual, emotional orientations. And the more that we do this, the more that we can play in that messy space, right, of nuance and mystery and misunderstanding, all of it, we know ourselves mm. better. And so playing in that sandbox of all three of those, the intersection of all three of those things is how I approach instructional design. Mm, thank you for sharing that and your unique approach. And I think that's what really is like the magic sauce that made me feel like this is the person I want to work with. She really centers the human being mm -hmm. and she is really grounded in you know, how can we make sure that the, appro the approach of what we're putting together is liberatory? Yeah. Um, 
does center as many d- diverse perspectives as possible. Um, that makes that that is why I was like, let's please work together. <laughs> You're like, this is my package. I'm like, I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> Because like I said, again, you know, where the place that I was coming from was I, I want to create experiences and spaces where people are, are able to go through really deep transformation. Mm -hmm. And I understand the limitations of my, of of me, of my experiences, of my skills. And I need to bring in somebody who is steeped in that and able to, um, uh, create a space where I can share my journey and I can share what I think and feel and right. what I have learned, right. but ultimately create it so that it's not just about, you know, this is what happened to me. So if you do the same thing, it will happen for you too, right? right? right. Um, so how can we make that. sure that this is a really, <laughs> right, there's so much of that in in courses. Um, and I just felt like that is, is um, it's not reflective of where I'm going, mm-hmm. you know, become a good mm-hmm. ancestor really is not the Layla show. Mm-hmm. It's about the work. Mm-hmm. Um, I may be the founder and the CEO, but I really try and um, decenter myself as, as much as I'm able to yeah. while still being of service to the work. Yeah. So uh, yeah, bringing yeah. you in, and, and this is why I wanted us to have this conversation on the podcast, because I wanted people to understand when well, you're going through this course that we're going to be speaking about. Nina is the mastermind behind it. Without <laughs> Nina, this course wouldn't exist. It wouldn't be as um, incredible as it is. I mean, we we got to the end of the design stage, right? And we were both like, I want to take this course. It's really good. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Yes. We were both like, I'm going to go through this course as well, mm-hmm. because this is so, and we were pulling from our experiences and our knowledge, yeah. but just the way it's put together is amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about it. So what is the name of the course? Let's, <laughs> let's let people know. Um, so the course is called Claim Your Space. And it's a self-study program to help you uncover your next steps as a change maker. This is the point, the inflection point, the point where people are coming into this. What we envision is you're already on the path of changing your life, changing your perspectives, changing you and your relationship internally. Um, introducing new concepts and possibly doing some change making in the world already, but you haven't yet drilled down to get real clarity on what is the right work that I am here to do and what is my right channel for doing that work. Mm -hmm. Let's Mm -hmm. talk a little bit about why it was important for us to create this course. I'll tell you from my experience, but I would love to hear what you think as well, Nina. For me, what I was seeing was we're living in a world and in a time where there's so much urgency because there are so many issues that need attending to. There are multiple dumpster fires going on in the world, right? There is poverty, there is racism, there is a global pandemic, there are wars, there are there is the patriarchy, there is the you know the the um, rampant capitalism and mm. the harm that that does. Mm-hmm. There is the transphobia, homophobia. There is the environmental destruction. There are so many pieces, and we as awakening change makers you become more and more aware this is going on and that's going on and I hadn't been paying attention and now I'm paying attention and I'm recognizing that I need to play a part in changing this. Mm. I need to do something. But we're running ragged Mm. because we're responding to every fire alarm, every uh, headline, every uh, act of tragedy and we're burning out and we're not really knowing how can I consistently and sustainably show up for the work of good ancestorship? So I wanted to create a a space in which people could really understand, look, I'm only one human being. (laughs) I have limited time. I'm actually not able to effectively give all of my time and energy to all of these causes. And I'm also not built to do every single thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So what is my right work and what is my right channel? Um, so that and, and everything that comes with that, the fears that yeah. come up, the yeah. confusion, the, you know, the setbacks, the risk t- taking all of that. That's what we wanted to build into this. What were your thoughts around it? I think what was really important to me, similar to everything that you named, was also this very high intentionality that we had for creating a space 
that honored the vulnerability of the process. And I typically do see that learning anything new, there is a level of risk that you are taking, right? Like I often think about learning a new language and how uncomfortable it feels to practice out loud because like, you know, you're going to slob and fall on your ass, say all the things wrong. Um, But that's really the case with anything, but particularly for something like this, that is so heart centered and it has such um, massive possibilities, right? In terms of uh, allowing yourself to blossom into the version that you want to become, to positively influence your family relationships, your community, and maybe even um, more on a global scale. Like all of that is can be really frightening. And so how do we hold space for the care and the acknowledgement of that um, and the risk taking that kind of is um, included on every level, every step of the process and, and the good encouragement, right? To say it is worth it. The time is now. Not only uh, is it beneficial for you, but it's beneficial for all of us, the more of you that you can become. Uh, so that was kind of the, the approach that I wanted to add on to your good um, awareness of what your community was asking for. Dear good ancestors, let's take a short break for a minute. Are you enjoying this episode? Then you should join our book club. The Become a Good Ancestor book club is a place for book-loving change makers. We are a community of engaged people from around the world who are passionate about social justice, creativity, leadership, healing, liberation, and of course, books. Each month on Patreon, we read and discuss the book from the current month's episode. And at the end of the month, we host an exclusive Q&A event with the author themselves. Our past books and authors include the New York Times bestseller, The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. Motherhood on the Choices of Being a Woman by Dr. Praya Agrawal. The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton, named a best book of 2021 by Barack Obama. And See No Stranger, a memoir and manifesto of revolutionary love by renowned civil rights leader, Valerie Carr. The internet can often be a loud and overwhelming place. There's a lot of information out there, but not always a lot of depth. When you join our book club, you'll become a member of a thoughtful and hopeful corner of the internet. To learn more, click the link in the show notes or visit becomeagoodancestor.com forward slash book club. We can't wait to see you there. Um, Let's talk about the approach that we took to this, because we didn't just jump in and say, okay, so what are we going to include in this course? We actually took several steps backwards to take a bird's eye view of the longer thing of what we're creating. Um, And I think this is part of your process, right? This is how you approach your work. But it was also built into me because I'm like, I don't want to create things just for the sake of creating them. I want to understand how it fits 10 years down the line. Yes, yes, yes. And I think that's what landed us on the community aspect of this, right? Like that there isn't just a, um, here's a product to buy so you can go do your work by yourself and not be connected to anything other than that. Um, but actually that there was the, the vision of creating a, a portal and a location in these internet spaces of that people who feel identified with this, um, this conviction, right. To be a good ancestor could come together and then to, um, and that it could build on what you've already created around the book club, but like be this broader, kind of space and collective of practitioners. And so we started with that vision, right? First, and then we went into, okay, so what are the, like the steps then, or the pillars, I think as we, we landed on of, um, of what holds that space together. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited to see that emerging and to see it being a tangible thing now that's outside of our brains. (laughs) that that is really exciting yeah right because it was I mean in early in this year I was like what I and I shared this with you I said it was what I can see is like these pillars I can see these you know these pillars and they kind of make up 
what I believe, because I believe the work of Become a Good Ancestor is now my, that is my right work, yeah. right channel. Like that is my work mm-hmm. now till the day mm-hmm. I die. In some form or another, anything that I do will be around good mm-hmm. ancestor. And so um, I was, you know, in, in the podcast, I was asked, what does being a good ancestor mean to you? And how do you understand that term? But I was also answering it for myself and having now had some life experience under my belt, I was like, you know what, what? This, these are some of the things that I see coming up as consistent yeah. themes of right. showing up with this um, orientation of good ancestorship. And one of them was about understanding what is it that I'm actually here to do? Right. And that's how we landed on claim your space, which is one of just one of these Mm -hmm. pillars of this good ancestor Mm -hmm. work. But what I love that you introduced and helped me to name is this Mm -hmm. community. And so let's tell people the name of what our portal is, because I love it so much. Yes. Please share with our listeners. It's called the Ancestor Oasis. And we landed in this space because we we wanted it to be nourishing first. And I remember distinctly you saying that, like, what would be nourishing and as an immediate reaction, right, upon entering that. And I just, I thought, how exciting, because we recognize that becoming the ancestor is work. It is hard. It's uncomfortable. And it is particularly in all of the, the ways that you name that the world is a dumpster fire. It's exhausting. And so where could we go to be nourished? in and to rest among one another and then to continue to do the work in great supportive spaces. And I feel like that that combination yes. just feels so right and so correct for uh for this yeah. mission. I love it. And I can't wait for people to see the portal yeah. because it's beautiful and it does immediately feel mm-hmm. nourishing. There is this energy of joy, of hope, of home, really. Um, and and so we we that's where we began. We didn't drive. We didn't dive straight into let's build out the course. We do, we dove into what is the bigger um, environment yeah. that we're building here. What are the values of that space? What are the what are the um, what are some of the questions you asked? I love some of the questions you asked. You were like, what is the learner's desired mm-hmm. state? Mm-hmm. You know, how did the how does the learner ultimately want to yes. feel? And centering the learner yeah. as opposed to centering what I know or what I have learned and what I want right. to tell you was very important. Yeah. And I want to give a shout out to our team as well, who've helped us to do some research with our community. Mm-hmm. We've had some wonderful people. Shout out to everyone who... Um, filled out our yes. surveys, yes. you know, who, who, um, who met with Natalia Sanyal, who writes a lot of our emails and copy, who interviewed mm-hmm. with her so that we could really mm-hmm. understand what are people struggling yeah. with? What are people desiring? What do they want to ultimately see from us? What do they desire for us to create for yeah. them? So that's also baked into Absolutely. this as well. Absolutely. And when, when we were able to get those pieces really yeah. clear, then we said, okay, so what is Claim mm-hmm. Your Space about? So mm-hmm. I'm going to give, um, I'm going to share a description of what the course is about. And I'm going to share what the four modules are as well, just very briefly, um, because we are, um, yeah, we're getting ready to share it with the world. And it's it's so, it feels so good to have it so concrete now and so clear. Um So Claim Your Space is a self-study to uncover your next steps as a change maker. And it's a digital journal journey that explores how to identify one's right work as an aspiring change maker. It offers a pathway for interrupting the major fears that can keep a person small and how their unique skills, strengths, lineage, and privileges can be a contribution in honor of those who've come before us and in service to those who will come after we are gone. So we have uh, four modules. I love the I love all the names. You're just so good at naming things as well. <laughs> so our first our first module is called Nourish to Flourish, mm-hmm. and this is a very um, uh, 
uh, grounding. I feel like it's baked into as well how we talk on the podcast because it's really about understanding who are the ancestors mm -hmm. who have influenced me and what kind of influence have yeah. they had and how does that inform how I show up in the world, how I see the world, what my privileges are, what my challenges may be. And then from that space, you know, really getting clear on what kind of good ancestor I want to be. Um, so that's a, that's, that's again, it's like giving the bird's eye view before we get into the nitty gritty of like, I'm here to be an environmental mm -hmm, activist. Mm -hmm. Like, but yes. why, right? What yes. part of your ancestry yeah. is is, is uh, informing yeah. that? Our second module is called Uncover and Recognize. And this is about understanding and uncovering the fears around change making um, and why we're encouraged to play small, to stay quiet and to comply with societal norms. Um, it was very important for me that we talk about fear in this course, because again, when we hear the word change maker, it just, it's aspiring, it's inspiring. It's like, yes, I'm that. And then you begin the work and then you realize, oh, I have all of these stories in my mind and voices and reactions um, because I have a lot of fears um, and they are legitimate and they are part of who I am. And I cannot be a change maker in the way that I want to be without acknowledging them and understanding them and integrating them as well. So we talk a lot about that there. And we also reflect on who are the teachers who have taught us how to navigate fear. Because every good ancestor who's come before us, none of them have been like, I got this. Right. I know right. what I'm doing. <laughs> Nothing's going to trip me up. Right. It's only the only thing I have to deal with is what's external to me, not okay. nothing internal, right? right. right? Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. Um, module three <laughs> is called Strategize for Change, and this is where we explore healthy change making. So, like you were saying, becoming the work of becoming is hard work, and if we're not careful, we can end up not being of service, but actually being servants yeah. and really sacrificing. Yeah our well-being for the yeah. cause. And yeah. sometimes we also have really um, what I believe are toxic to us ideas that the only way to prove that we are really about the work is to put our well-being mm -hmm. on the line and to not take care yeah. of ourselves. Oh, okay. And I always say, when I say I want to be a good ancestor, I still mean I want to live a really um, long life. Without question. Without question. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ready to become yeah. a good ancestor yeah. right now. Like, I want to live here. a long, healthy, <laughs> yeah. yes. And so what do we need to think about when we think right. about healthy right. change making? Can I just add on module three? Because I feel like we had so many good conversations as we were like really like dissecting them. That what does this look like? And I remember distinctly this um, this conversation about using the language right for um, activist and change maker, and and the fact that yes. we have had so many um, models. Some of our models that we we uncovered in the lineage thinking about right like who influenced us were not good models in healthy change making. And so it is an invitation, I think, for us in this time to make that a strong anchor because like the, yes. the downward, right, the, the consequences of being a servant but not being, being able to be present um, are too high. And we've seen so many of our good models and our, the, you know, the lineage of change makers, um, you know, giving that high price. And yes, I want to see people here, present, yeah. grandchildren, great-grandchildren, right? Like around them, if that is something yes. that they want, right? Like, but to live long and to be happy as they are influencing and yes. making good change in the world. And I think that's how we be in, of honor to those who've come before us, because we are, it's, we are, we are undoubted, we undoubtedly have more privilege than those who have yes. come before us. And they, I wouldn't want those who come after us to suffer for us to prove that they are being it vanished. I want I want to work hard now so that they don't have to do so yeah. later, right? Mm -hmm. Um and and so I want to honor those who've come before us in that same way. Yes. But thank you for yeah, thank you for naming that. Um our final module is called Act to Become and this is where we really get to the core of right work, 
right channel. Um, and we look at now that I've been doing all of this reflecting and strategizing and re- where to from here, we want people to leave this course with a real sense of clarity about where they're going to be investing their time, their energy, their resources, their attention to be a contribution to world changing, right? And we include lots of different examples because we've had lots of different people on the podcast, in the book club, and also we reference all the time, you know, those who've come before us. And I think what, what we, what is always clear is that when we see someone and we we say that person is a good ancestor, what is often the case is that they're f- super focused on what they believe they are mm-hmm. here to do. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say that they don't think another cause is less important or that they, you know, that they think, oh, I'm just going to stick in my lane. I'm not going to worry about anything else. I think it's more that we understand that actually all of these causes are interconnected. And the most uh, the the be- the way that I can best be of benefit is to focus on what my skills and strengths are, what my privileges are, what my passions are, right? And who, where most need, like what those beneficiaries of that work yeah. most need. Yeah, love that, love that. That feels right? like and such where a, all yeah, of those exactly, come together. Exactly, yes. the point of. Um, playing in the in those three in those areas, yeah, and that that being the yeah. right work, and it feels so good and yes. smart to have your incredible experience to help name and and create the process a process for uncovering that, and also I love how we were really thoughtful about like who else where do we recognize other people have done this exact thing, yes. right? Like go look them up, go read yes. their stories, go listen to that podcast to then remind yes. you, right? Like it's totally possible it's for, for all of us. Exactly. Yes, exactly. I also want to add another layer to this as well, which I think is what makes the work that we're doing really unique. So uh, it must have been a few weeks into us working together, Nina, and I'm scrolling on Instagram and I see a post that says trauma informed <sighs> training for BIPOC facilitators. And it's a post by uh, Adria Moses, who runs the School of Radical Healing. And I click on the post and I'm like, I, I think mm-hmm. I need this. I don't have trauma-informed mm-hmm. training. I do not have an understanding of how trauma impacts me and how it impacts other people. And I truly believe that to be of service in this work, whether it's this course or any other thing that we offer in the future, I, it's I have a duty of care to understand this. Right. Because when we're talking about change making and we're talking about those fears, trauma will play a huge part in why we have those fears and how they show up. And so I send it to you, I DM (laughs) it to you and I'm like, hey, there's this trauma informed training for BIPOC facilitators. Uh, I think it would be really good for me to do this for me to have this, but what do you think? Do you want to join me? And you're like, I'm in. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, and yeah. so you you signed up before me. You were even faster. You were like, I'm, I'm signed up. I'm done. I'm here for it. It took like a very quick scroll through Adria's Instagram to be like, oh, absolutely. This is the thing. This is the thing. And and it's, and it's interesting, right? Like that it, it wasn't like we, neither of us had heard of trauma-informed lens or having this kind of no. um, orientation and language, but the way uh, that Adria shows up for it and holds space for it, demonstrates it, I have learned so much. I've learned so much. It's felt like such yeah. a contribution and it's very much woven in how we wrote this course, right? Like it, it definitely- Absolutely. It, it shifted. Did. I think it shifted it things. It it allowed us to have a, a deeper sense of um, mindfulness yeah. and care yeah. um, because, I mean, I think we were bringing that in anyway, but I think understanding like when you start to understand how the brain works, how the nervous system works, how trauma works, you take several steps back and you want to be more mindful about, you know, making blanket statements or um, thinking that all things will apply to all right. people, right? Uh, we're coming into this, we're 
each coming into this from many different perspectives. And so I'm so glad we're in that. We're actually, as as the time of recording this uh, episode, we're still in this training. So it's a 12 week certification program. It's very in-depth, very thorough. Shout out to Adria Moses. Shout out to the School of Radical Healing. Um, It's incredible. And I'm so glad that we are integrating this into the work that we are doing. So grateful. Yeah. So speaking on folks who have influenced Mm -hmm. this as well, let's also give a shout out to some of Team Good Ancestor who have helped to put this together. (laughs) So I've already named um, Natalia Saniel who has been instrumental um, really throughout from the early stages of when I was like, I want to build this thing and I want, I need to write this website copy and her (laughs) saying, I can do so much more than just write website copy. I can help you really. (laughs) Yes. I can help you really understand what your community needs and I can help you really tap into and get clear on your company um, mission and your vision and your values and so many things. So shout out to Mm -hmm. Natalia. Shout out to um, Kim mm. David, our chief marketing mm-hmm. officer, um, without whom, I, get, I mean, with each person, I think, I feel like this company, I just couldn't run it. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't even know what to do. Um, <laughs> so she's, she's been key. Um, the person who holds everything together mm-hmm. is um, Brittany mm-hmm. Younger, our online business manager. She has the, she is the key. She is the person who is uh, running all of our operations and really keeping the ship moving yeah. and keeping things um, uh, moving forward. And also shout out to your, who's your team member who I've now brought onto my team and said, you're now team good ancestor who is helping us build out this platform and, and helping us really put together yes. this course. So yes. who is that person, yeah. Nina? Nicole Salvi has been incredible, not only bringing like the technical platform uh, wisdom in all the ways, um, but also just this beautiful eye for our desire for care to make that appear yes. and be illustrated in this digital space. I just think she is brilliant at it. Um, as well as all the things that we need for these systems to talk to each other. (laughs) And so very pragmatic and detailed and yet very um, graphically oriented, which I think is is just an incredible combination of skills. So, so grateful to her. Um, Grateful. She's incredible. And just the, mm, the joy of, and like all of these people that you've been naming, there is this like spark of just, um, just compassion and, and like and like yes. energy to be about this work, right? Like front and yes. center. I just love it, and I'm here for it. I just always get so excited. Like there's Slack channel stuff Absolutely. going on. I'm like I'm diving in. What are y'all saying? What are y'all talking about? <laughs> yes, what's happening? Even and and you know, not she hasn't been involved in the course itself, but Hannah mm-hmm. Pillow, who helps us to produce this yeah. podcast, right, and is helping to produce this bonus episode. Each one of these people, to me, is a leader in their own right. We are predominantly. Uh, women, uh, predominantly BIPOC women team. Um, And each person uh, is bringing in this lens of liberation, joy, you know, harm reduction, everything. Um, And it's, it's, yeah, it's the dream. It's the dream. I I love Team Good Ancestors so much. Kudos, Layla, that you have magnetized, attracted all of these incredible humans (laughs) to this particular mission at this moment. And like, how unique is that? How um, incredible are you as a as a person, as a as a visionary, to to hold space for that? And I just want to like honor the way that you lead and hold space for each of us to to grow, to challenge each other, to have conversations about our wholeness, right, and about our well being, mm. um, and so that the work doesn't become more important than ourselves. And that that is a beautiful yeah. like dance right? That good leaders do. And so I'm so grateful to, to be witness to it and to, um, and to receive the, the goodness (laughs) that, that comes from it. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for naming that. That means so much to me. You know, you are, um, you know, that this is my, 
This is my first, everything we're doing is my first time ever doing it. So <laughs> we went from a very tight, small, intimate team of three to, I believe we are nine now and mm-hmm. growing. Um, and, uh, and we're doing, I'm doing everything yeah. for the first time. Yeah. And I think what really was helpful to me was getting clarity at the beginning that there is no way that I can build yeah. this alone. And the only way that I can succeed is to have a team who I want to be around, people I want to be around, who I respect, who know more than me, right? Who I can learn mm-hmm. from and who can bring their expertise in and who can help me co-create. So, cause we've co-created this mm-hmm. environment that we have. Our Slack um, is banging. Like <laughs> yeah, I will say out. that. It is amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. Um, okay. So uh, I want to, just as we wrap up, a couple of things because one of the things that we haven't talked about is what were some of our challenges with this project? And there were challenges, and I think they are challenges to not just this pro- not, not just this course, but actually our work as a whole. Um, I'm going to name, and this is, again, shout out to Natalia Saniel for helping us to identify this. We, ha- we essentially have two different yeah. audiences, Right. We have a white audience who have come in through me and white supremacy and that work. And then we have a BIPOC audience who may have also come in through me and white supremacy, but are here because I am a black woman and they are here for the work that I do and the way that I show up. Those two different groups are needing different Mm -hmm. things. Um, We may all be united in our journey to want to be good ancestors, but we're coming at it from very different approaches. So I was like, Nina, this is what we're mm-hmm. dealing with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, we're not just building a course for one type right. of person. We're building one course for two different groups, mm-hmm. essentially. And there's probably multiple yeah. different groups even yeah. within that, but two core yeah. groups. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And, and I'm so grateful for, for Natalia's work and those interviewees who volunteered to like really go share with us, right. In depth about like, what is it that they would be most nourished by because again like that core intentionality was just like to be nourished to go do the things but we can't go do the things without that core nourishment and and i feel like we we really were able to name like the the things that those two populations needed were very different and so then how to show up for that and one thing that i feel like we we inquired and and kind of received from um adria's course was again right like that reflectiveness of Mm providing space for their own agency. And I feel like we have dropped this in so many places throughout the course of reminding people of their own inner brilliance and their own sense of knowing and the confidence to reconnect to that sensitivity. um, So that yes, we have recommendations. Yes, we have a beautiful process that Layla has utilized that other people have utilized. And we want you to check in with yourself. Does your nervous system feel okay about stepping into it this way? Does your heart feel like this is the next best thing? Um, And so I think that nuance and the the naming of it felt really right. Um, And that we named throughout the course, you know, white folks may want to do this thing. BIPOC folks may want to do this thing. And because we were really like, yeah, "Yeah, they're not the same things. They're not the same invitation all the time. And I I love that we... Yeah. have done that. And it, and I hope that the care Me too. has shined through for everyone, that it wasn't, you know, that it was coming from a compassionate place. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's a dance, because I'm going to say it yeah. is a dance. That is a dance that we will continue to weave through anything that we mm-hmm. create at Become a Good Ancestor. Mm-hmm. Um, we will always have an understanding that we're not all having the same experience right. and we're not all experiencing the same privileges Correct. and powers. And so naming that, drawing our attention to it, providing context, and then also inviting people to use their um, use the power of their choice right? Uh, to, to, like you said, check in and, and see what is, what feels right. We'll provide recommendations mm-hmm. always. Mm-hmm. Um, but we will never say you <laughs> must do this or it must be this way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 we trust yeah. you to choose what you believe is right for you, uniquely you. Um, and I love that we have done that. And I wanted, so I want to tease then, because like I said, we're going to weave that into anything that we do. 
We are currently working on something for the future as well. And this is going to be our flagship program. We have not settled. We actually haven't settled on a name for it yet. We keep calling it the flagship yeah. course, the flagship, the signature program. But we're building out because I told Nina, Nina, I want to work with you. Anything that I create now, we're doing it together. I cannot do this alone. And um, I want to be able to continue having these experiences with you and building these beautiful things yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be... Um, Inviting people to join us uh, later on this year into our flagship program. It launches officially in 2023, but we'll be running a beta version in 2022. And this will be, so whereas Claim Your Space is a full self-study program, this is going to be a community group program that we go through together and really getting into some of those other pillars of what it means to be a good ancestor and some of the work that's needed there. Um, I don't want to give too much away, <laughs> but in the same way that we are weaving so much care into the self-study, there is so much intentionality that is going into this program, um, including who we're thinking about in terms of space holders, in terms of like having a care crew, right? In terms of there's so many things because we want to provide a space that is trauma informed mm -hmm. and that is liberatory, but that also continues to honor everyone's different experiences yeah. as well. Yeah. I'm excited I'm so for excited it. excited about it. You know, I was thinking the other night about just like, what sparks are going to be created in that experience, right? Like what new beginnings are, you know, a year, five years, 10 years from now are going to completely transform someone else's life. They're going to emerge in this environment. And it's just, it's an amazing yeah. kind of humbling feeling to know that about a certain space. Um, and then to show up to be like, okay, we got it. We got to come a hundred percent for this, like, because it's going to be incredible. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> All right. Let's wrap up. Thank you, Nina, for this conversation. Yes. It was incredible. I'm so glad that we had the opportunity to Thank do you. it. Um, I want to encourage people to go check out your work. So where can they find your website and yes. where can they follow you? Yes. Um, so I'm on uh, most of the social media play places, Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can also check out my website, ninaeverflow.com. I have a great little quiz for those who are thinking about building a course, or maybe they deliver courses on a regular. Um, but I like to say that like, there's a difference between telling, teaching, and training. And are we really selling trainings and, and programs that really change people's lives? Or are we just kind of teaching, telling at them? There's some nuance there that's important. And so the quiz on my website will help you uncover uh, if the practices that you're doing in your spaces are really being supportive for your learners. So um, I hope to hear from folks and please reach out because it's just like, I love doing this work. It is the, it is my right work. Yeah. For anybody who is wanting to build out a learning experience, I really highly recommend checking out Nina's work. It's incredible. Just that quiz alone sounds like it gives so much value um, and you'll be able to really identify for yourself what are you really doing. I also want to say this. I really love your newsletters you. as well. Like I rarely read <laughs> newsletters, but I really love your newsletters. Um, they're so good. So I want to encourage people to sign up for uh, for your okay. newsletter list as well. We'll include, we'll include all the links and everything in the show notes. Notes. Um, let's wrap up with our question. Uh, what does it mean to you to become a good ancestor? To me, it means to be a nourishing space, to be a nourishing space for my own becoming and to be a nourishing space for the people that I love and the people who um, are in my life for very unique reasons. And uh, for me, it means uh, to show up in every day wanting to be a contribution and a beneficial presence on the planet. I love that. Thank you, Thank you Nina. Leila. Thank you, Leila. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you've enjoyed learning about today's author and their incredible work. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave us some love with a rating and review. You can find us wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. And of course, don't forget to buy the book we talked about today. We're on a mission to center and celebrate BIPOC authors 
And you can help us do that by sharing this episode and the book. You can join us in our book club to dive deeper into today's book. Visit becomeagoodancestor.com forward slash book club to find out more. For more inspiration and learning, you can find us at becomeagoodancestor.com and become underscore a underscore good underscore ancestor on Instagram. Thank you for being on the journey with us as we strive to become good ancestors. In honor of those who have come before us, and in service to those who will come after we are gone.